So this is a pretty interesting little book that I picked up the other day. I took off the dust jacket because they always get damaged. I really, I love hardcovers. They're more expensive. Um, I got a discount, but hey. Um, the point is that I don't like dust jackets because they always get hurt. Anyway, this book is The Hermetic Science of Transformation, and I've been reading it recently. It's by Giuliano Kremers. And it's translated by some other dude because I guess it was originally in, I think, Italian or something. But anyway, so I've just started going through this book. And I don't know if you can tell, but my like I've been using this receipt as a uh, bookmark. And I'm not that far into it. But there was this really cool section that I thought I'd bring up with you guys. So, you know, I could leave the information for the book in the comments um, when I'm done making this video, if I remember. Um... But there's this section that's talking about the preparation for magic. Not like what you should set up before you do an individual like ritual or something, but basically how like what do you need to understand and know before you practice any magic at all. And this is really interesting. So there's several different rules. So let's go over them. I'll just list them first and then I'll go back and I'll just talk about them. So the preparation for magic is as follows. To a, to possess unlimited courage and cold reason that is not unkindled at the first flash of illusion. B, to have a high sense of rectitude and morality and to be afraid in their name of abusing it, what one tries to snatch from the unknown. C, to wish for light in order to comfort those who, whose earthly imperfection prevents them from seeing. D, to understand and make it understood that man has within him all that is necessary to develop the superhuman qualities of his spirit. E. To be persuaded that upright consciences, desirous of good, and being reasonable and whole, without hypocrisy and fear, invite the genius who is closest to the nature of the individual to become manifest. F. To be persuaded that the tide of opinions and trite phrases misrepresents, twists, and renders badly the language that the genius addresses to our conscience, and that we close our ears to the truth in order to listen to lies. And G, to be persuaded that if the genius is taken as a guide, the astral serpent that appears as a sign of the struggle is dominated, and one becomes a god. If instead of understanding, one misunderstands, or rather one dreams of reproach, then one falls into the serpent's mouth. So, what does all this mean? Because there's 50 pages prior to this, so I'm going to break it down for you, right? So, A, to possess unlimited courage, right? That's don't have fear when you are practicing magic because um, when you are afraid of what happens when you have rituals and when you do spells, and I've talked about this before, you have there are entities that will come in and feed off of the energy, and if you scare them, they could influence you and, um, you know, kind of ruin your day. The other thing is, if you have fear, um, then, like, it's self-sabotage with any of the rituals that you want to do. Um, so, cold reason that is not kindled at the first flash of illusion. Basically, any little doubt that you have, throw it away. Right? You've got to believe in yourself, believe what you do, and believe in your process, and that will make your magic work. As, of course, given that you appropriately know the formulas and stuff to do. But, I'm... Um, Got to continue. So to have a to have a high sense of rectitude and morality. This is talking about like the karma and the threefold law and what goes around comes around. Basically, um, and to be afraid in their name of abusing what one tries to snatch from the unknown. So like whatever power that you are able to gain or use with magic, don't abuse it. Use it for good things. You know, I can understand like people will say you know like. You get to make an omelet, you got to break a few eggs. Sometimes it's good to have, like, chaotic energies and stuff. Yes, but the thing is, you don't want to let things get out of hand, and you don't want your reasoning behind your spells to be malicious and nasty. Is good energy and stuff good sometimes? Yes. Is bad energy and stuff bad? good sometimes? Yes. Sometimes it's good to go with, like, the, the light stuff. Sometimes you need a dose of that of that chaotic stuff. Um, C, the, to wish for light in order to comfort those, da-da-da. Having positive intentions behind what you do. Even if you curse someone, it's for positive intentions. Like, you can 
you can curse yourself to eliminate an addiction. You can curse some or bind somebody to stop them from doing something that's going to make an overall situation better. It's all about the positive intentions. Then to understand and make it understood that man has within him all the necessary to develop the super, superhuman qualities of the spirit. Accept, that basically means accept your power to change things. Your universe, what's around you, is a projection and an understanding of you. Everything is mentalism if you go to the Kabbalion, right? Everything starts with the mind. Your universe is because of the things that you do to it, and you have the power to change your world through the actions that you take and the magic that you do. Let's go with part E. The to be persuaded that upright consciences desirous of good and being reasonable and whole without hypocrisy and fear invite the genius who is closest to the nature of the individual to become manifest. Okay, so the concept of the genius, you can kind of, you can tie that, that's, that's what it was talking about for the last like 50 pages in here. You can tie that to the Necronomicon's Watcher or the Holy Guardian Angel of the Tree of Life Kabbalistic thinking, where it's trusting that inner voice. It's trusting that spirit guide of yours that you connect with that it will teach you the right things and it will guide you. It's that inner knowing. You can even equate it to like your your intuition or your hunches or your your any like psychic abilities that you have. Those are all like extensions of spirit and stuff. That's what it's talking about with invite the genius who is closest to nature to the individual to become manifest. So the that's why in my videos about the watcher, the watcher is your higher self. It's something you are aspiring to be. And even your holy guardian angel is kind of a perfection of the same wavelength as you are. And you just got to go from who you are up to that by constantly improving yourself. Then F, to be persuaded that the tides of opinions and trite phrases, <clears throat> trite phrases misrepresents, twists, and renders badly the language that the genius addresses to our conscious, conscience. That's a lot of wordage, and it took me a while to figure this out. So basically, when we hear something from like our intuition or from our, any of our spirit guides or um, the watcher, guardian angel, what have you, however you want to word it, a lot of times our interpretations of it mess it up or a second guessing it mess it up. So when you get a message or when you intuit something or your divination or your, your magic communicates with you something, of course be discerning about it, but don't let your fears and your past experiences and any negativity kind of snuff that out. You know, it's basically being discerning and not to second guess is what it's saying. Then we have G. To be persuaded that if the genius is taken as a guide, the astral serpent that appears as a sign of struggle is dominated. Da -da 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 -da. That last one, if you constantly follow your higher self and, you know, your holy guardian angel, your intuition, your psychic abilities, whatever you want to label it, just that higher um, aspiration, right? If you follow that, then you are straying away from the opposite of it, which is negativity and, you know, being consumed by um, your nasty nature. So, like, think of it this way, right? You are the ego, you follow your super ego, and you tell your id that you are the boss. That's kind of what it's talking about. So, as long as you are following the higher intention for all, for your good and everybody else's good, regardless of the magic that you do, because, once again, um, <clears throat> there are reasons behind um, positive magic and chaotic magic. They both have really good um, reasons for being used, and it all depends on the situation. But regardless of what you are doing, don't let it be just because of carnal nature and id stuff and anger and frustration and impulsiveness. Think everything through before you do it, and you will not be, like, overtaken by your power, consumed by it, or even just led to um, apathy, you know? As long as you are following and aspiring to be a better person, <clears throat> then that that's what you're supposed to do. That's kind of what it's talking about here. So that's all of it in a nutshell. I know I went over it in about 10 minutes, give or take five seconds, like 10 minutes. But the cool thing about 
that is it really gives a perspective on magic that was so so much in a little nutshell and there's a ton more to reading this book that I've been trying to like poke through in my free time and um, I'm even butchering a little bit of it with some notes and stuff if you guys can kind of see some writings in there um, but you know this is like the first thing I've added to my library in a in a while and I think that like digesting some info from books and you know sharing it with you guys to generate some discussion and to share my interpretations of the reading material is kind of a cool thing. So let me know what you think down in the comments. You know, questions, comments, complaints, concerns, issues, either down there or in the email. You can check out any of my other videos by checking my channel or the playlist stuff that are suggested at the end of this video. Or you can check out my books, which you can find through the link down in the description. Good hunting. Thanks for watching my video. So if you want to check out my playlists, I have, among others, The Simon Necronomicon, The Tree of Life, General Magic, Tulpomancy, a playlist on my books, The Elements, Stones, The Theories That Govern Magic, and The Gods and Goddesses of Mesopotamia. If you want to check out my books on Amazon, I have Creating Consciousness, Magical Mechanics, Magical Theater, Handy Sigil Magic, Magical Movement, which is an update and expansion upon Handy Sigil Magic. Magical Mastery, which is a combination masterwork of Magical Theater and Magical Mechanics. And The Guide to the Spheres and Beyond. You can also find me on Facebook at MagicologyYT. You can email me at PriestOfTheNecro at gmail.com. And you can even check out my Instagram, which is Magicology. And good hunting.